Hey guys, so I know I already did an aloe care guide already, and if you haven't seen that yet, I will put a link in the description below and also a card above. But I thought I'd do a little bit of a bonus video, a little bonus round, and show some of my other aloes. Now, I pulled out a few more from my collection, so I would say, I haven't totally counted them, but I'd say roughly around three dozen here, and there's some more that just couldn't fit on the table anymore. And I'm not gonna go through every single one of them, but I think by looking at the span of them, you're gonna see, wow, look at all the different diversity and modeling and coloration and leaf types there are when it comes to aloe. So, this one is a cultivated variety, and this one is called Aloe Blue Elf. And I really liked it because it had this more vertical formation, and you'll see some of the ones that I'm attracted to, at least, you know, in the younger uh, forms, they have this more vertical rosette um, as opposed to something that's a little bit more sprawling. So here's one with no name. So shout out if you actually are familiar with a lot of the cultivars of aloe. But this one I picked up at my farmer's market and I really love the look of it. Like these little lines kind of on the top of the leaves, but it has a little bit of pink frayed edges as well. But has no name whatsoever. It's just being sold as aloe. You can see also has a little offset coming off of that, which is really adorable. This one too has a little offset that you could see here. Um, so that one's really nice. And it has that blue tone, which a lot of these other aloes have as well. Here's my aloe striata. And you could see that it's starting to, it had lost some of its leaves. I cut those off and it has this uh, more fan-shaped look to it as well. But again, that glaucous kind of leaf, and that this one actually turns down, which, you know, again, has a, has a bit of a different form compared to something like this. This one is pretty neat. I love the look of this. I don't know if it's my favorite, but probably in my top five. This is Aloe deltoidiodonta. So deltoid probably refers to the leaves being a little bit more deltoid shape. And then odonta refers to teeth, as you can imagine, like orthodontist. And that's probably the teeth along the edge of the margin, which, you know, probably all of them should have odonta in their, in their um, species name, just because a lot of them have those teeth. So this one you may already be familiar with because I showcased this in my aloe care video. But again, here is another one with that little bluish sheen, that glaucous look, almost has this like blue bloom to it. Now this is one that is um, being over harvested, I believe. So this is aloe pelgare. And you'll see that I actually have some different varieties here. I mean, I started to plant them up in the same planter, largely because they're still small. And I do have to admit, some of these get to be ginormous sizes. So I'm taking advantage of their small size right now and planting them up in a little bit more wider planters before they actually expand in size. This one's an interesting cultivar. I really like the look of it because it has this kind of white creamy color to it. This is called aloe white stag, and I'm sorry, but I actually don't know what a lot of these are actually crossed with in order to be able to get this cultivated variety. But uh, this one, really beautiful. And again, once you have a cultivated variety, they will vary now and again. I've seen some white stags that are a little less white, but this version of it was re really beautiful, so I decided to, to actually get that one. Now I had my Faucaria tigrina in this planter, which I picked up at my plant swap that I had in New York. And this is Aloe Miklau Linii, I believe is the name. And again, this has this really beautiful face shape, you know, so it kind of goes up like this, a little bit more of a vertical look, has these white striations on a little bit of a darker leaf with some red teeth. I just, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think this looks really beautiful. So I kind of moved my Falcaria tigrina out of this because I felt like it needed a really special planter pot. So again, thank you for the person who I traded this with. Um, I believe you actually made this pot. It's a really beautiful planter pot and thank you for that. Quick 
speaking of plant swaps, I actually got this little blue aloe right here, also at my plant swap, and I don't even know if you remember trading with me. I don't even remember what I traded it with. Uh, I don't have a name, a species ID on this, but I think I could actually get a species ID. And this one has grown out, and also I just noticed this little baby aloe off here to the side of it. And you could see it has that fan-shaped look of what some of the younger aloe offsets look like. And then you have this one with a little bit more of a sprawling rosette shape. Let's see, which, oh, allopecii. So again, I think this looks very similar to the allomiclolinii. And again, it has that little bit more of that vase shape. This one doesn't have the red prickles along the edges of the leaf, but again, has that really beautiful modeling. And uh, again, I moved another plant out of this planter in order to be able to plant up some of the aloes. So I just think that they really do display better. and. I started to get into aloes largely because I'm gonna be traveling again and I want some plants that, you know, can take care of themselves a little bit and aloe is definitely that plant. It's very resilient. Uh, I don't need to be here for a week or two weeks at a time. These could pretty much take care of themselves, especially in the winter months in the Northeast. I could go away and these don't need to be watered all that frequently, which is just so great. Uh, I'm going to show you this one and I think I've already shown this to you in 365 days of plants, but this is not a true aloe. This is actually an intergeneric cross. So this is crossed with a gasteria and an aloe, which is really neat. And I actually think this looks so beautiful. Um, I actually think when I look at this, this is aloe variegata. I would not be surprised if there's aloe variegata in the parentage of this plant but um, I really love this cultivated variety. I don't think the seeds are viable because usually when you take an intergeneric cross that's between two genera, so aloe and gasteria, that you probably don't get a viable seed, but I'm not sure, I could stand to be corrected. So if you know, tell me in the comments below. All right, so this one's very similar to this, and these are cultivated varieties as well. This is called Aloe Sidewinder. Really, really love this one. It has a little bit more pink here. This one has a little less, but I think that they look very similar. They might have even come from the same uh, seed set, but you know, became different cultivated varieties. And again, when you get uh, plants like this, you, in order to be able to keep the look of them, you have to just take the offsets. If they produce seeds, oftentimes they're not going to hold true to their uh, colors or their form or their modeling. So taking the offset will ensure that you're going to get the, the same clone of your mother plant. All right, this one is one of my grass aloes. And again, very kind of like grassy look, of course. That's why it's called a grass aloe. And it has this more upright version, very soft to the touch. So some of these aloes, you know, you could bump up against and they're very stiff, but this one has a much softer appearance and you could see that the, the leaves are a little bit more easy going. This is probably one of my favorites because I just love the coloration of this. I mean, look, this kind of dark green and then it has this creamy green striations and modeling in the middle. And again, these like little red prickles off to the side. And um, again, I had to put this in like one of my dark green planters because just to throw off some of that color of, of the leaf itself. Then I have this. I think this one is Aloe Delta Lights. And this one will also redden up. You could see that it has a little bit of pink around the edges. So if you give this a little bit more fuller sun, or if you're starting to see the leaves, the older leaves will actually start to, to pink up. So it's, I mean, I mean, there's just so many different types and variations of aloe. It's definitely one of those genera that you could just like fall into and go down the rabbit hole and just start collecting a bunch of them. And the cultivars, 
kind of like orchids. When you get into the cultivated variety of orchids, there's just so many to choose from. And aloes are the same way, except you know these plants, like I said, I'm gonna be traveling a lot more. These are plants that I don't have to worry about as much when I do that. So I hope you enjoyed this. And remember, if you want to see how you can actually do some more care for your aloe, then check out the aloe care video. All right, guys, see you next time. If you didn't hear yet, we just released Houseplant Basics, which is an introductory mini course for beginner houseplant enthusiasts. The video-based course is set up to be both concise and comprehensive, and it serves as a perfect primer for our Houseplant Masterclass, which is a month-long course on houseplant care, cultivation, and more. You can find out more information on both courses at homesteadbrooklyn.com or search for the courses in the description below.